Throughout the years, the state of Oklahoma has been known for a lot of things. It's cowboy culture, or it's rich Native American history. It also has a lot of beautiful scenery to offer. Inside of the state of Oklahoma lies McCurtain County, a county with just under 35,000 people. It's been dubbed the bird watcher's paradise of America, containing over 327 species, with many of those being rare finds. Flying high above humanity, the birds have witnessed a lot, and they were likely the only witness to an event that would occur in early February of this year. If the birds could talk, I wonder what they would say happened. July 11th, 1997. The world would make way for Alyssa Donaldson. She would be brought into this world by her mother Carla and her father David. The place that they decided to call home would be Ida Bell, Oklahoma. Alyssa was described as spontaneous. She was outgoing. Living in an area where beautiful landscapes are just a short drive from your home keeps you in tune with nature, so she enjoyed that as well. Growing up, she was an all-around athlete, participating in sports such as basketball, softball, and was even a track star. Alongside of playing sports, she would also get into pageants, even becoming 2013 Miss McCurtain County. Two years after achieving this title, in 2015, she would graduate from Ida Bell High School, where she would be ready to take on the world. Shortly after graduation, she would move to Edmond, where she would complete an LPN program at Central Oklahoma College. After obtaining her education in Oklahoma City, home would be calling her. So she would decide to go back to Ida Bell, Oklahoma. The year is now 2022 and Alyssa is 24 years old. She would be working at a local Walmart as a pharmacy technician. She has achieved her goals at this point. She's even had a daughter along the way. Family describes Alyssa at this point in her life as intelligent, loving. She had a free spirit. She was beautiful inside and out. And she was an all around good person. February 5th, 2022. Alyssa Walker Donaldson would prepare herself for a night out. And then she would head to a bar called The Watering Hole, located in Hocha Town, Oklahoma. After attending this bar, Alyssa would vanish and she would be nowhere to be found. The next day on February 6th, her phone would be bombarded with calls, texts from friends and family looking for her. No one can seem to reach Alyssa. Now, this type of thing was not normal for her. In fact, she had a job. She also had a daughter to come home to. So her being a no-show was immediately raising red flags. Time continues to elapse and no one is getting a response. So the next day on February 7th, the family would go down to the police station to officially report her missing. The city is placed on alert and the police are now beginning their investigation. Now in the beginning of this investigation, it ultimately led them to this spot, the watering hole in Hocha town. And once there, a few patrons would testify that while she was there, she told them she was leaving and she was headed to another bar that was in the area. This place would be called Chiggers. So the authorities would go to this bar. Only once there, they would quickly find out that she never made it. So all they have is a missing Alyssa Walker Donaldson. No clues at all. And a story that basically leads to a dead end. So the police do the only thing that they can at this point, And that's to issue a be on the lookout for her 2018 Buick Encore. Along with the description of the vehicle being released, missing posters would be in full effect. By February 8th of 2022, the story would take a drastic turn. An event that would occur a couple of days prior to Alyssa's disappearance would give way to conspiracies that they might be related. On February 3rd, 2022, McCurtain County Jail would lose four inmates. These four inmates would escape the jail and they would be on the loose. With Alyssa missing, it quickly turned into suspicion and people quickly began to think 
What if they found her, maybe targeted her for a vehicle so they could possibly get away? Now to even further strengthen this theory, Alyssa Walker Donaldson actually knew a couple of the inmates. In fact, one of the inmates she actually had bad blood with. They had had a few run-ins in the past and now she's missing. He's on the streets and things aren't looking right. On February 9th of 2022, Alyssa Walker Donaldson's aunt would actually go up to the police station and give her testimony. She would tell police the name of the man that she was actually into it with. They would take notation of it. But after finding out this information, they would quickly dismiss it as no more than a rumor. 28-year-old Kobe Watson would be the first to be captured on February 5th, followed up by 21-year-old Donnie Middlebrooks, who would be captured on February 9th. This would leave two more inmates still on the loose, and Alyssa Walker Donaldson is still missing at this point, with no word from her. And with no word from Alyssa, the family would decide to turn to the media in hopes for her return. My big sister, we just want answers. We just want to find her. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Anything, know anything, who she was with, what she was last seen, anybody she was clubbing with, partying with, anything. We just want to know. Anybody got any answers? This is the time that I hold secret. Don't make it worse. We just want answers. That's it. Please. That's all I'm asking. I just need y'all. Bring my baby back. Please. She's a good kid. She do not hurt nobody. She always smiling and laughing. And she have a, I have a three-year-old grandbaby. She can't do without her grandbaby. She never goes two or three days without seeing her baby. Please, if anybody know anything, pick up the phone and call. And let us know. I'm begging you, please, just bring me my daughter back. February 10th, 2022, the police would be surveilling the area as well as aircrafts in the air. While in the air, one of the planes would actually spot an object inside of Broken Bro Lake. Now, Broken Bro Lake is a short drive from the bar that she was last seen at. Once they get to the area in which this object was spotted, they would send a camera underwater where they would, in fact, spot the vehicle of Alyssa. The underwater camera would also confirm that her body was still inside of the car. Friends and family get word that there's a police presence at Broken Bow Lake, and on February 10th, they would all go down, and they would actually witness the discovery of her car. They would witness it being dragged out of the water and then eventually towed off. This would actually bring a heartbreaking ending to the search for Alyssa, but at this point, there's still no answers how she got there or what happened so the car is hauled off for processing and the family can't do anything but wait on autopsy results hoping that it will reveal at least a clue as to what happened the car would be hauled off for further processing and the family would be forced to wait on autopsy results hoping that it would reveal a clue to what actually transpired during the autopsy of Alyssa Walker Donaldson, the coroner would observe that she would have no signs of trauma, as well as having a blood alcohol level of 200 milligrams per deciliter. The autopsy would ultimately detail that she was drunk and she died due to an accidental drowning. The family, the friends, and the town that she lived in would be notified of what officially occurred, and the police would close the case. February 16th, 2022, one of the remaining fugitives, 21-year-old Justin Hughes, would be captured. The following day on the 17th, the last fugitive, Jerome Rutherford, would be taken into custody as well. Cause what if I just want to be with you? I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do. But honestly, I can't remember if you love me. I'm just feeling lonely, I don't know. 
If it's one thing that I've learned from doing these cases is that a photograph is a still image. It's nothing more than a monument of life. The ability to stop time for a split second and home in on the essence of that moment. Photographs can create emotion. It can bring happy thoughts or invoke fear. It can bring misery. It can show love. It can show so many different things of the human aspect. Photographs tell story after story after story after story, memory after memory. So before you take a photograph, think long and hard because what you're leaving behind is your legacy. And one day those photographs may be used to tell your story. And what a great story it'll be. So show us your life from innocence to youth. Show the world that smile. Give us everything and hold nothing back. Every photo is a reflection of you in that moment of time. Show us your goofy side. Show us your passion. Show us what you cherish. Show us what you love. Show us who you'll miss. And one day, years and years from now, when your family has all passed on and you've become nothing more than a memory, and that photograph might be sitting on a thrift store shelf and someone will pick it up and look at their smile and wonder, I wonder who it was. I wonder what type of life they lived. But make no doubt about it, somewhere in that photo will show a piece of you if you just smile. Honestly, I can't remember if I loved you But it feels like I do when I think about you now So the inmates are captured and what happened to Alyssa, that story, the book is closed. So any theory about the escaped prisoners was put to rest along with the police report. Now, when it comes to Alyssa Walker Donaldson and the accidental drowning, some people take exactly what the police said and they go with it. However, some people still don't believe this theory. They believe that Alyssa had too much to live for and there's no way possible that she was drunk driving. You see, there's a lot of things that occurred in this situation that are abnormal. Things that just don't add up. Now, when I first actually found this story, the red flags immediately jumped out at me, you know, just viewing a few of the pictures that were taken on the scene, etc. So, I decided to call the police station myself. I would actually call the local authorities there and attempt to question them, you know, on basically what happened. But let me tell you what they did. I called, and the first time I called, you know, they were cordial, they were very nice, until I mentioned her name. And then when I asked to speak to the detective over that case, they hung up in my face. So after they hang up in my face, I actually call right back. And when I called right back, I immediately confronted the lady about why she hung up. She then told me that the phone lost power. Now, I want you to understand that whenever you call a local police agency, you're gonna be talking on a landline phone. So her losing power was an excuse that was absolutely, you know, it was bogus. So after we have a chat about that, she actually says she's going to transfer me to the detective who was over Alyssa's case. I then was transferred to a voicemail. I left my contact information and didn't receive a call back. So at this point, I was guessing, you know, they don't want to talk about it. Now, the first thing that I actually want to point out in this case is the fact that they said she was drunk driving. Now, she was actually found off Stevens Gap Road, and that road is actually very curvy. You know, it's a lot of twists and turns in it. You know, there's a lot you have to do to actually get up to this water where the car was found in. Now, to get past all the twists and turns in that road and then eventually crash into the water is, you know, that's questionable all on its own. So I step back and I analyze things from a non-biased standpoint and I say, OK, let's say she was drunk driving and she did manage to get around those twists and turns on Stephen Gap Road and eventually crash into the water. 
Now, that's not some outlandish theory. It sounds very feasible that if someone is drinking, they could actually crash into the water. I mean, it happens all the time. But now you have to take into consideration how they actually found her car. When they pulled Alyssa's 2018 Buick Encore out of the water, her front end was actually facing the sand. Judging by the spot that they actually found the car, that's the only spot that the car could have actually went into the water at. And if you're pulled out with the front end facing the sand, that means that you would have actually had to back your car into the water and not crash head on. But to make this situation even more questionable, the back windows were rolled down, which is an immediate route for escape. However, when the car was recovered, so was her body. The next thing I want you to understand is that she went missing on February 5th. However, she wasn't found until the 10th. Now, when it comes to conducting autopsies, blood alcohol levels are only considered accurate for the first 48 hours. Anything after 48 hours is not 100% correct because after death, the body's glucose begins to convert into alcohol. It would actually be the bacteria and fungi in your body which kickstarts this process. Now, if you're found in the water, which already has tons of bacteria and fungi of its own, plus your body is inside of the water and you're deceased, and you've already been drinking that night, it doesn't take much to figure out that a falsely high blood alcohol level is very feasible in this situation. So there's a strong possibility that she wasn't drunk at all, but the coroner isn't gonna tell you that, neither are the detectives. Because we all know how they love to open and shut a case, if it's that easy for them. I would definitely say that there are a lot of odd circumstances in this case. You know, what I highlighted, what felt suspicious to me was basically, you know, my thoughts. It's a theory that no one has to run with, but you know, I do feel like the situation is concerning. I feel like it definitely needs to be taken, you know, a little bit more seriously and they need to look into it a little bit more. It's very sad. It's tragic that it had to end this way. Rest in peace, Alyssa Donaldson. Thank you for being a light for others.